Thank you for registering to use your new Volante Account Management Portal, or AMS. In this session, we will review how to create your account, how to log into the AMS, and some of the features you may see in your account. Before setting up your account, confirm that you have received your location-specific credentials from your provider, including your location, web address, and login account ID. We will be reviewing the AMS in our Volante demonstration portal, so please follow along using your site-specific detail. Let's begin by setting up your account. Once the site is loaded, click on the link for sign up to complete your account setup. This will bring up additional fields for you to input your information into, including your account ID, which is given to you by your provider. Next, enter your email address and create a password. Your password should be a combination of letters, both upper and lowercase, numbers, and symbols. Once you have confirmed your password, review the terms and conditions and click on the accept box. Click on the sign up button to complete your registration. You should see a success message on screen. If you get any error message at this point stating that the account can't be created or your ID does not exist, please reach out to your provider for assistance in confirming your account ID. Once your account has been successfully created, you will receive an account activation email. Should you forget your password at any time, you can click the Forgot Password link and follow the steps to reset your password through email. Let's sign on with our new credentials. Enter your account ID and password and click on the login button. You may be prompted to read and accept a usage agreement document at this time. Once you have reviewed this document, click on accept to proceed. If you click on decline and change your mind in the future, you can accept the opt-in form from your customer profile within the AMS. To access your account profile, click on the drop down arrow beside your name in the top right corner of the page. From here, you can select My Profile to access your account details. Here you can change your password, opt in or out of the service if enabled by your provider, set your account auto load notifications, and create a default credit card payment method. It is important to note, you may only have one credit card stored at a time. You can also remove a stored card and replace it with a different card from this screen. You can also choose to log out from the account profile section as well. Let's take a look now at the wallet homepage where your account credentials will be stored. The view badge button, if enabled by your provider, will display a sample version of the badge used on your on account payments. The account section of the homepage will show you all available accounts set up by your provider and your transaction history. You will see the name of each account type, the current balances, and if you have a shared account set up with a spouse or child, you will see a head count icon. You can also navigate between all account types using the arrows shown below your accounts. Depending on the type of account your provider has set up for you, you may see a positive balance account, a negative balance account, or in some cases, you may see a meal count plan or a points plan account type. Below the account information, you can review your recent transaction receipts. There are several different kinds of icons that will display beside your transactions. A tag icon indicates a purchase. A circle with an arrow indicates a money load to the account. And if you see a person or group icon, it indicates that the purchase was made on a shared account type or the account may have been shared by a spouse or child. To view the transaction details, you can click on the date of the transaction to open it up on screen and print a copy if you wish. In our transaction, we can see the items purchased and the payment methods used. This will look the same as a printed copy you may have received. Depending on the number of transactions you have, you can switch between pages and also sort transactions by the account used to make the payment. You can also export a list of transactions by date and total, however items purchased will not be exported. In this next section, we will look at how to load funds to your account and how to set up auto load for when the funds on your account get low. Loading funds may be allowed for some or all account types based on your provider. 
Now let's look at how to load an account using the load funds link shown below one of our accounts. By clicking on the load account button, you will be brought to a page that displays your current balance. It allows you to enter an amount to load into the account. If you have a stored credit card in your account previously, you can select to use that card now. Or you can enter your card details, including card number, expiry date, and CVV code from the back. Once you have agreed with the terms and conditions, you can choose to load your account using the load account button to add funds. A message will appear indicating that funds have been successfully loaded to your account. These funds will usually appear in your account within 24 hours. The next screen that loads is the reload screen. This will show you all of your accounts with possible reload options available. You can also enable auto load from this screen as well. You do need to have a stored card on record for auto load to be enabled. You can return to your wallet view at any time by clicking the wallet link at the top. To set up auto load, you must first have a stored card on file. To set up a stored card, we will go to your account profile and we will go to payment. From within payment, we can choose to add a new payment method where we will enter our card number, the expiry date, and the three digit code from the back. You'll hit the save button to store this card on file. A new payment method has been saved. We can now return to our reload page where we can select the auto load link for our account. We will now set the slider from auto load disabled to enabled. We will choose an auto load amount for when our funds get low. So for example, we'll put in $50 and we can determine the amount to load when the balance drops to a certain amount. In this case, I'll say $10. As we can see, our payment method has been selected and we can now agree to the terms and conditions and choose save. Now, when your account drops below the set balance, your account be reloaded with the amount you choose. Now you don't have to worry about running out of account funds in the future. In this next section, we will review how to change your opt-in and opt-out using the account payment for payroll deduct if enabled by your provider. By opting into the program, you'll be allowed to use your badge to pay for transactions at your location. You can also change whether you opt in or out by accessing your account profile. Click on the drop down beside your name and select my profile. From the personal info tab, you can scroll down to the payment deduct section. If you have previously opted in, you can click the button to choose to opt out at this time. The opposite will apply if you have previously chosen to opt out. You can reactivate your profile from this location. Please note it may take a few minutes for this change to be updated at your site. The last section we will review is our notification tab. From the notification tab, we can enable the notifications for when our account balance has reached or fallen below the auto load threshold. And we can set the notification for when any of my accounts is automatically reloaded with funds. These notifications will come to you by email. That's all for today's training session with your new account management system. Thanks for watching.